Hello and welcome back to the Mantis Automotive channel. In the last video on the GT500, we went ahead and installed a Mantic clutch. And if you watched the video to the end, uh, you would have seen that we had an issue with the clutch not fully disengaging. And I believe the problem at this point was a combination of problems. Um, but what one has to do with the clutch being a little different than the OEM, I believe the springs on the floater plate are a little thicker than the stock one. And so the uh, clutch actually needs, or the slave cylinder needs a little more travel to actually fully disengage it. And um, there was some air on the lines that we got out, but still it does not fully disengage. And I'll also give you an example of what it's doing here in a minute. But anyway, I've got a new master cylinder. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this. The existing one, if you let it sit for uh, a day or so, uh, get in in the morning, push down the clutch, it almost goes to the floor with no resistance. So there's some kind of leak on the master cylinder. Uh, the slave cylinder is brand new on this thing, so I, I'm really thinking it has to be with that, or perhaps even a line. But anyway, we'll check into that. So anyway, with, uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. To give you an example of what's going on here, I got the car up on the lift and I'm going to go ahead and fire it up and put it in gear and then push the clutch in and let it out and we'll observe the rear wheels and what you're going to see is that when the clutch is in, the wheels will slow down but they never stop spinning, which means that the clutch is not fully disengaging. And when the clutch does not fully disengage, it makes it more difficult to get into gear and uh, especially reverse, since there's no synchros on the reverse gear, it can be very, very difficult, almost impossible to get it in reverse. There's been a few times where I've actually had to turn the motor off, uh, then put it in gear, put the clutch in, then start it uh, just to get it to back out. Um, usually you can get it in gear in any of the other gears that have the synchros, uh, but the reverse can be very difficult. Okay, here's an example of the clutch not fully disengaging. Okay, so I'll put it in neutral. Clutch in, start the car. of any uh, clutch fluid uh, leaking uh, from the line or the connectors or anywhere here from the bell housing. Uh, so I don't believe we have any kind of external leak. Also, the fluid in the reservoir is not going down. We'll get under the hood here and you can see the hose coming out from the clutch master cylinder here. It goes to the brake reservoir because it shares fluid with the brake system. And the first thing that we're gonna need to do and uh, not necessary, but <laughs> I'm going to pull the driver's seat. Uh, that'll give us much better access uh, to the bolts that we need to access uh, underneath the dashboard here. Okay, now before tightening these uh, two bolts down all the way, I want to get this over the end of the clutch there, the clutch pedal, and then put the retainer clip on. Like so. Now you can tighten these guys up. Okay, now that we have it tightened up, you can see linkage working here. Okay, uh, just to show you, I didn't take video of it coming apart because it's very difficult to get the camera under there and get good video. But with the assembly out, you can see where the bolts have to go. There's six of them. There's four there on the brake booster. There is, let's see here. And right there is where the uh, uh, hoses go through the firewall. And then if you go way under here, you can see the various connectors and the uh, bolts that have to go up there on the very top. Very difficult to access down here. But uh, fairly straightforward, and once you get under here, you easily be able to see the connectors that need to come off to get the brake pedal assembly out. 
All right, now that we have the clutch and brake assembly back in and the new clutch uh, master cylinders hooked up and coming through here, this is the most important part here is bleeding it properly. So this hose here coming from the master cylinder normally goes right in to this reservoir here, but I plugged it into another hose that I have going all the way up into the top here. And I'm gonna fill this with brake fluid and then pump the pedal and you'll see all the air bubbles coming out and you'll just keep pumping it until there are no more air bubbles. Again, this is one of the most important parts. Um, we're also gonna put a vacuum up here and help pull that air out. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm gonna use uh, the syringe here, uh, pull some brake fluid out of the uh, container and then I'm just going to inject it right here until the level gets to about this area here and then I'll just keep pumping it until the level starts to go down and we purge it of all the air. Okay, so initially get the uh, fluid in here. I hooked up uh, this hose going upward so the air bubbles will go up. And I hooked it to this little reservoir here. And uh, so I'm gonna start pumping the pedal and this should start drawing the fluid down into the master cylinder. Okay, now we have uh, most of the air out of it. So I'm gonna plug in the vacuum pump. A little bit of vacuum on this. We'll pump it a little bit more. Hopefully get a little bit more air out. <laughs> So let's go ahead and pump this up. Actually pump it down. I can already see some air coming out right down here. Right there around uh, 27 inches of mercury, a vacuum. <clears throat> and let's see if we can get some more air out. Go ahead and pump that. <clears throat> Pedal's definitely getting pretty firm now. All right, let's see if we're still holding the vacuum here. And yeah, looks like we are. And we still got some air slowly coming up here. So we'll just continue this process till we see no more air. Then we'll uh, hook it all back up and refill the reservoir and we should be done. We'll go ahead and take it for a test drive. All right, with the new master clutch cylinder in and blood of all the air, uh, let's give this another shot and see if the clutch will fully disengage. So again, we have it up in the air here. So these wheels are free to spin. Um, you're gonna put it in here, let the clutch out and then the wheels will obviously start spinning and then we'll put the clutch in and see if the wheels stop. And if they do, we'll take it out for a test drive and see if it uh, shifts any easier. And if this is the case and this works, it definitely will. So let's give this a test now. Uh, so let's go ahead and fire it up. And uh, before it was very difficult to get in reverse because there's no synchros going in reverse. Uh, the other gears were a little easier, but still difficult. So this is really the ultimate test of just getting it in reverse. Then it slides right in, no issue. So let's take it down the road and see if it shifts better. Pops right in first, no problem. problem this is great man that shifts incredibly easy I don't think it's ever been this good super simple well swapping out that uh, master cylinder was definitely a success that was definitely the issue and causing all the problems here so we're in great shape now now one other thing to note I was also having an issue with the clutch uh, when it sat for a day or so um, come out after a couple days and it was very noticeable that when you put the clutch in, it didn't feel quite right. It would kind of go down very easily halfway and then start to catch. And then of course, uh, pumping the thing um, would build the pressure back up and then it would act normal. So that's kind of an indication that the master cylinder was kind of leaking internally. So I, I had some issues definitely with the master cylinder. And if you experience something like that, then there's a good chance it could be your master cylinder. So that wraps up this video. Looks like it was a success. So I'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye have a great day.